what's up, everybody? Um, we'll wait to say hi to our friend in chat because they're getting food. But yeah, today we're doing another schoolhouse. Uh, it's composition today. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to be using some of my own stuff as well as some of uh, Travis's uh, stuff from Monday's stream. Uh, with his permission until he gets mad and wants to punch me in the face. Uh, as always with these schoolhouses, it's a lot of, this is what I know, this is what I've learned. You may have things that work better, things you disagree with. I don't really care. Do what works for you. This is to help, and if it doesn't help, why are you crying? Uh, other than that, you know, feel free to ask questions if you're here. Uh, YouTube or in Twitch chat, I don't, wherever's fine. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other schoolhouses you'd like to see, like different topics, or maybe revisit one, you can put them in the uh, suggestion box down below. Uh, you have anything to add to that, Travis? Uh, no, I think you pretty well covered the bases. Yeah, that's what I do. Don't worry, I'll forget about something incredibly important later on. Uh, let me bring up my list real quick. That's not a list, that's a finder. There we go. Okay, so... Do you have a preference? Do you want to see this applied to your piece first or just to a random thing I have? Or do you just want to talk about the basics? Uh, I mean, this is your lesson plan. Uh, if you want to pull up a piece that maybe illustrates the basics. Uh, let me see if this does it. I was just pulling up some random artwork we've already shown. And you can kind of see some of it here. So, what the hell? That was weird. You make that a little, not quite that light. Okay. So, uh, for now, let me get rid of these lines and bring up this. We'll kind of go over the big, in my opinion, the big three things, you know, what these are, what they're called, and what order people place importance on them might change, whatever. They're all important, usually. So, got the focus. We've got flow. Uh, this could also be something like the elements of a piece or direction. This one can be, this will probably be the one you'll hear a bunch of different names for. I just like flow because it kind of, I think that separates itself from the other two enough to kind of tell you it's a different thing. And then third is contrast. So as far as I'm concerned, most things in a composition will fall into one of these three things. So let me go ahead. So first we'll kind of go over the focus, um, different ways it'll be important. So we'll actually go to Travis's piece first for that. So, I mean, let me make a new layer so I don't mess up anything important. With yours, your focus is pretty easy for multiple reasons to figure out. One, there's a face. Two, it's front and center. So naturally, doesn't matter what it is, we are usually drawn to human faces or something that looks like a human face. Our brains are just kind of hardwired that way. So anytime you have a face, it's really going to go off, which also makes a coup back here kind of a secondary point of focus. And your third thing is also your sign up here, just because it's the only other real element of like note right now and um mm -hmm. for anyone who didn't watch the stream these challenges are timed so they don't exactly have a nice calm environment to figure it all out in and what this does is it kind of results in your composition being like just kind of one straight line diagonal and you kind of have the light beam here so you almost have this like acute angle as a composition and the reason i bring that up is because um uh, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about this, but there's the golden spiral and the rule of thirds. And I say rule lightly, because, as always with art, rules are suggestive, not really, like, an yeah. uh, end-all be-all. But it helps the yeah. other rules so you can break them. Right, so... And that's the perfect example, because uh, sometimes having... None of the rules apply, and purposely going against them is the best thing you can do. But... You do have to know them. 
So generally the idea of the rule of thirds is you take whatever your canvas or image area is, divide it up into equal thirds horizontally and vertically. So I just kind of brought out these little lines here. So, and the general idea is as long as your focus, like your main focus, and even sometimes the minor ones are along these lines somewhere, doesn't matter if it's here, 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 it'll usually strengthen the composition as opposed to having it dead center. Like in these spaces, it kind of feels dead. And you know, there are exceptions like maybe an angelic figure up here would has a purpose. Maybe you're trying to go for an extremely secluded feel and you have a character down here to feel make them feel isolated. But even then, that might work better here or here. So it's almost, in most cases, better to abide by this. Um, I find the golden spiral, you've probably seen it if you're into art at all. I find that like a little too overbearing and I don't worry about following it because I've never really like had to... Usually, if you're just making smart choices, it'll occur naturally. It's not really something you have to try to force. But Travis so kind of has intelligent design. Um, I mean, when it's designed by intelligent creatures, I think it's natural. Just that's all I'm saying. But yeah, so Travis has his face pretty much right on the line. It doesn't need to be directly in it. He's got it like close enough to where yeah, that's perfect. He also has the other one of the other points of interest, like the sword. And Aku is a little bit out here in nowhere. For like secondary and tertiary focuses, it's not always a big deal. But let's just say for the sake of this. How did you do that? Why is that crop tool being weird? I don't know why the crop tool. What's my canvas? One second. Yeah, I'm not sure why my crop tool is acting like these edges don't exist. Huh. Um. All right. Instead of that, let's do canvas size, and we'll add. This might take some troubleshooting because the tools acting weird yeah. all right there that works perfect i will just slam an extra color in the background we'll do gray instead no no we won't there we go okay so now if we toggle those lines back on and readjust it we made the canvas a little bigger Grab the background. So the divisions kind of... So now, just by making... Basically by zooming out the quote-unquote camera a little bit, now we get the sign up here in it a lot more. We'll make that red. Jack's a little bit out, but we can shift them over. Mm -hmm. This line's a bit low. So we can do a couple things. Um... I was wondering when they uh, can give subs because they're looking for that stretch goal. That filthy, filthy stretch goal. Jesus, Kyra. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, we're working on it. Yeah, Bear, let's not go into that just yet. Uh, we will explain that at a later date. Um, or they can find it on our YouTube. That's true. The, the short answer, Bear, is... Um, Nickelodeon 90s Yowie. So, there's a couple answers here. And, trying to figure out what I like the most. So, oh, shut up. What did I do? There. Trying to figure out where I would want Jack. like on that side like yeah I feel like here is a little more interesting and then you bring a coup in 
just a bit, and I would say, a, oh fuck if I keep hitting that button on accident, and a little bit lower. So it's gonna look a little janky because I'm cutting up a JPEG. It's art, baby. Yeah. And you can make the car a little bit bigger here. Let me get a brush so I can slam in some basic. But just by shifting these over, like even a tad. Uh, there we go. I was wondering why my brush wasn't showing up. So yeah, so yeah, just by slamming this in a little bit more, you can kind of see how like now the composition has a little more room to breathe. Uh, I would move his hands here a little bit. I would tilt it, and I'll explain that here in a second. I'll tilt it and bring it over a little bit away from his body. So it's kind of a little more active in the composition. So when you have it completely sideways, a lot of times when you have elements completely flat, Naku's car was a, not quite there. It was a little more diagonal. So that worked. But you've got Jack's blade like perfectly parallel with the composition. Uh, there's two ways you could fix this. You could either tilt Jack's sword, which I feel like is a good call, and bring it out a little more so it's a little more pronounced. And what this also does is you've kind of got the light beams crossing this way, and now his sword's creating another diagonal the other way. Mm. It just creates a little more visual interest at this cross pattern, which ultimately is kind of like your main focus is really right around here. So, uh, another way you could have fixed it is instead of tilting the sword, is straight up tilting the whole composition. And I don't feel like that works as well with this piece because it makes a coup a little awkward either way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes just tilting the plane they're on even slightly helps. A third option would be adding some sort of uh, background plane that helps add another diagonal to it. Like, um, I don't know, they're at a diner, so what could you add? Like, it could even be, like, part of the diner building. Like, just sitting here off on the edge. Uh, but the big thing is to avoid that perfectly horizontal... Uh, it just kind of, it stiffens up Jack a little bit, and it makes the sword a little bit less active. Gotcha. Um, you didn't really have time during this challenge to add any other elements. Um, you had some really good stuff going on, like with the light beam crossing behind Jack, that helped push him forward. Um, just the sign being a little bit in a different space helps a lot. Because, uh, let me see if I can go back far enough. Yeah. See, and a big problem with the sign and the other one is right now it's kind of suffocating off in the corner. Mm -hmm. It um, feels a little bit disconnected from the rest. Like, if this was a smaller element in the background, I think you'd get away with it. But with it being one of the only three elements, it's kind of a big, a big deal. Yeah. So, um, another way we could approach it is not by cropping the entire thing to a pixel. Don't do that. It's kind of the opposite. Could get in real close and personal. Make it a postcard. Yeah. Wish you were here. But just readjust these lines for that. And maybe move it a bit. I'm trying to find a good spot for it. I kind of like that. And the reason I would suggest this for the way you particularly have this composition is a lot of times what you can do with compositions when you don't have a sense of direction or a good starting point is kind of use basic shapes to figure out your composition. So right now you've got your different uh, focuses. You've got Jack's face. 
you've got him drawing the sword, which feels like a pretty important thing in the picture, and you've got a coup in his bullshit back here. What this does is it kind of creates a triangle pattern between these three objects. And what you could also do is add the sign back here for the fourth point and make it kind of a square composition instead. Mm -hmm. And you can do this a lot. Sometimes you'll see circular compositions. A lot of times you'll see like half circles. Uh, it's all kinds. But a, generally a shape is a good way to kind of figure out how to arrange your elements first off. Um, let's go back to this. So, we kind of went over rule of, like that, rule of thirds, the general where to place stuff. So, right here, I've kind of got, let me get a new layer. There we go. I've got the foot, the kind of drapery, and her kind of creates a triangle. You could argue the plant's kind of part of it, and this is the triangle as well. In fact, I like this better. And... Yeah, that definitely works better. Sorry, I was debating with myself on that. So, kind of creating that contrast and um, make, avoiding like very rigid structures, like placing your objects here, here, and here. Kind of boring. It can work for some things. It all depends. But generally, offsetting that triangle a little bit or, in this case, if you wanted to consider the drapery, the square, or, well, now this is like a weird trapezoid almost. Anytime it's a little skewed will help add visual interest. So these shapes can help define it a lot. And if we put on the lines, you can see I've got my leg on one of the thirds. The vine's real close. Her face is real close. So I do kind of place a lot of my elements along this. And, um... I did this like a year ago. I don't think I intentionally did that. It just kind of happened. But yeah, so you can see like the rule of thirds happens a lot even if you don't mean it to. But yeah, so like you can look at um, like any kind of piece or comic book cover and pick out the couple main focuses and be like, all right, it makes this shape. Or I don't know, maybe it makes this shape. And you can kind of see how a lot of compositions are organized by roughly one shape. Like, really, this composition can be broken down into this. This is important. That's all. And that's the point I'm trying to get across. Um, I will say the one thing to try to avoid... So let me get a snapshot of this real quick. So if you were to... have a composition, one of the big, like, things that'll trip up a lot of people, because you'll see this sometimes, and it'll work, but when you do it, it looks kind of bad. Say, this is our image. Probably actually something closer to this. This is our image. You've got your character. They're kind of front and center already. That's boring. But anytime you have this kind of upside-down U-shape it will kind of kill the composition a lot. It'll really take a lot of the life out of it because all of this becomes a dead area and nothing's happening. So you take two of these lines already and just fill it with nothing. So it, it just makes the composition a lot harder to make interesting. Um... Let's see. So, I mean, that's kind of like the general thing behind focus. Some of the other things you can do for focus in a piece. Say you have your elements and you're not really sure. Uh, your contract doesn't allow you to release the industry secrets. I didn't sign that contract, Kyra. You can't make me. You're just <laughs> mad. You can't sub yet. Um, so, uh, the other big thing with focus is like... Setting them along the rule, like these lines and doing the rules of three thing is pretty easy when you consciously think about it. Um, sometimes the hard part is when you have a complex composition is figuring out how to get the eyes to focus on that, uh, well, focus, point of interest, whatever it is. So what you can do with a lot of the composition elements is kind of force it. So if you'll see in the background, and we mentioned this slightly in the first uh, schoolhouse, Travis, is you have these other items pointing to her. I have all of these barricades in the back kind of leading their way to her. 
the tentacles on the ground both point at her. The um, drapery from the uh, villain here kind of surrounds her, and some of it even points directly at her as well. Yeah, even she's stuff all is framed out. Yep, even stuff as simple as the rocks on the ground. Like if I wanted to, you can add uh, debris. I could have like a little rock pointing like directly at her. Uh, broken glass is a really good thing to do. Because let's say you have, let's make just a tiny little canvas here once I make a new layer. So let's say you have, you know, your little character here. Uh, they're kind of off doing whatever. And let's say... Let me turn off those lines. They're distracting right now. Why aren't you drawing? There we go. Let's say there's like big bad scary dude in the foreground. And they've broken in like, I don't know. It's a battle zone. There's debris. Who gives a shit? They've got some little background. Maybe like a wooden beam's falling behind them. And if you put just a bunch of gl shattered glass, stone, anything on the ground... Uh, hell, it could even be just, um, let's say, actually, change this up, let's just say the villain's looking through a broken window at this person. So now you've got these frames of the window kind of helping the composition, but you can have all of the broken glass just pointing straight at that character, and all this does is help reinforce, like, hey, this person's the focus. Look here. Oh, that makes sense, Kyra. All right. Um, so there's a couple other things here in this composition. Uh, we'll actually come back to this because I want to keep on the main point. But yeah, so using the background elements to help emphasize a character will always kind of... It's a neat little trick, and it also kind of solves another issue. Because if you were to have all this background stuff here be nice and straight and even, that in itself is kind of boring. So instead, using that to help, uh, using that to tilt it on like an inclined plane helps like activate all of this area. Like just straight lines, if it was just like straight rocks or just some flat wall, this would be kind of boring. Like just, oh, there's a brick wall behind the character. We've never seen this before. Instead, broken rubble, that's kind of all twisting different ways, jagged, uh, going this way and that way, makes it just a little more visually interesting. Alright, um, and so that's kind of it for the focus. You know, you've got those general shapes, you've got the rule of thirds, and you've got using the elements of the composition itself to kind of frame out. Framing, that's what I was looking for. Framing, I couldn't think of the word. Uh -huh. Use uh, the elements in the composition itself to help frame the main focus. Um, so, and the elements kind of help um, with the flow as well, which is kind of like the second big thing. So flow is kind of the overall feel. So of like the sense of motion in a piece. So let's go back to Jack for a second. And take it back to the original state. There we go. Hide those lines. So as I kind of... You saw me outlining it before. Your general flow with your point of interest. You've got Jack. A coup. The blade. you got your light beam. And you got the sign over here as well. So right now looking at all this, your flow kind of goes. You go through the sign. And this way. Okay. So the problems with this one are... Kind of... Everything up here is kind of dead area. Pretty much everything down here is kind of a dead area. There's just not a lot going on. Like, all of your focus is kind of in this one-third. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where a lot of this composition falls apart. Like, moving Jack over, even though he would be dead center. Like I mentioned, breaking the rules work sometimes would actually be better for this composition. Because right, yeah. it would help solve a lot of this area. And it would even give you more room to bring in a Koo's car a little bit, too. 
Maybe if you wanted to make the car bigger, show more of his face, whatever. So flow will really help you figure out a lot more of what's going on. So let's see. What's something we could add to the foreground here? This was like 1920s diner, you said? What what era? Uh, 50s. 1950s? Okay. Um, trying to think of what could be added to the foreground here. A bit of another car. Another car? Yeah, there you go. That's just something as simple as another car. They're at a drive through It makes sense. So, just something to, like, help this area feel a little more active. Just like, I don't know, the back end of another car. And this gives you another foreground element to play with. Which maybe... You don't really have to tilt this one because you can just use the end of the car as, like, a diagonal flow. A milkshake on the ground? Yeah, that's a good idea. You could add some clutter, garbage to the ground, like Jack just kicked some people's ass. Uh, for litter, or, I don't know. They got the meal wrong, he got mad. Uh, this area back here could be, you know, a city, a simple skyline. Sometimes you don't even have to get, like, really involved, like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to draw a whole city. Something as simple as just, like, a little stradiation effect, like this, is all you need to make that background pop a little. Because now you've got all of this motion counteracting on your composition. Because earlier your composition was essentially swooping this way. Mm -hmm. Just that simple little gradation, just line work, however you want to do it. Just going the other way really helps the flow. Because now, instead of the viewer only going this way, this way, they can kind of circle back through. And the goal with most compositions is to have the eye focus on the main focus, of course, and then want to explore the rest of the composition and look at all the other cool shit you have hidden around. Uh, this car would kind of be a little more passive, but without that car there, this dead space feels a lot more... Um, Ironically, for it being empty, it feels a lot more loud. You notice it. Like, hey, there's all this over here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel it, lived in. Yeah. Ironically, it being empty makes it one of the loudest things there are. So, yeah. Sometimes just design elements. Who gives a shit? You know, it's art. It doesn't have to be real. Do whatever you want. Um, You could have... You don't even have to ground it in perspective or reality. Like, I don't know. If you want, maybe you just have, like... I don't know, the customers in the background that ordered food, like, just have, like, their silhouettes in the background just being menacing little shits. Um, what else? You can put, like, I don't know, like, a, just a table here, anything. Just a little more lived in, like you said. And again, I know this, a lot of this is a victim of the time, time limit on challenges, so you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so... A lot of this one, um, I kind of have this wall here to kind of cut it off. So this actually kind of hurts the composition a little. But in general, you've got the uh, tattered cloak or whatever. You've got the foot. You've got the tentacles. So th basically the idea is you kind of... Whoops. There we go. As you come in, basically go in, go out, like... You've got a couple different lines. This isn't the best composition for flow. But just the general idea is there's elements to keep your eyes moving. Like the kind of tentacles lead to her. She leads to this. This leads to the foot. The foot, hopefully, it kind of leads you out this way, honestly. And in the sense of a comic book, that's fine because it leads you to the next panel. Mm -hmm. So comics is a little different because you have to consider the composition of the whole page. Uh, let me see if I have any other examples here. Okay, so... Again, these are just pages and roughs from a comic I was working on at one point. So... This one's a little more simple, but you've got this big gap in the crowd. Why isn't that showing up? There we go. It was on a layer that was off. There we go. So you've got this big empty line in the crowd... That kind of helps right here. You've got these foreground elements of these little, uh, like, hanging lights. 
And, you know, I kind of purposely tilted them. So already you've kind of got these little lights helping bring you in. You've got the big crowd. And here's your focus. And that's also why all the stuff in the other part is kind of uh, intentionally blacked out or left filled in. Just to help reinforce, hey, look at her. Um, even the perspective helps bring it in. The perspective actually takes it to the back and then brings it back for you. And obviously the the bottom third of the page is pretty well broken up, but that like thicker line kind of creates the, the top third there. Yep. And then um, another reason I have this crowd kind of... Uh, these This is just a rough, so it's not finished, but this is basically saying, hey, black these parts out. Because I have so much open space down here, I want this nice contrast between the two. And then it kind of all surrounds her. She's dead center. It's the focus. See, alone, this panel, she's right in the middle. The composition kind of not the best. When you take into account the entire page, it's pretty close to her being on one of those thirds. Like, comics is a whole different beast when it comes to that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, okay, so up here. Composition. Uh, we've got the box pointing towards her. These random bits of machinery pointing towards her. We've kind of got... Um, so something we didn't talk about yet is negative space versus active space. So, a lot of times with those shapes... I mentioned it earlier that that upside-down U-shape in a composition is horrible. So... If, essentially, my screen was just this, I've got the character here, and then all of this dead space around her. Kind of boring. The second you add a little bit more, now it's a lot more well-rounded of a composition. I've got this active stuff, cool things to look at, like the fence, this little box and all the overgrowth, some random machines, and then there's just a wall over here to stop your eye from traveling too far. And then you contrast it with all of this negative space around her. What ends up happening is it makes her almost impossible to miss. She becomes the focus just because she's the only thing in this big open area. So this is kind of one of those, like, you can abuse things that shouldn't work by planning it out well. Um... Do you have any questions so far? I probably should ask this sooner. Uh, no. It's all been pretty straightforward up till now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll go back to... Where, where did I have it? There we go. Our little fake composition here. So we're doing some other stuff in here. So like I mentioned with uh, kind of the flow of the elements is the direction things are going really help. So just creating these diagonals automatically make the composition a little more interesting. Uh, so some other, other stuff you can do to really help is foreground elements. Foreground elements will add a lot to it. So stuff in the foreground will help you frame, help you focus. Uh, and an easy way to utilize that is with contrast, which... Ta-da! Kind of the last big thing. Contrast is what will make kind of all the elements tie together and work. So, if I were to have the same kind of composition, more or less, like this, a little harder to read, because now we've got this character up front, we've got this guy in the background, we've got all this glass. So, contrast big thing is, well... Contrast. Fucking surprise. Who would have thought? And the way you utilize it is... Let's actually get some dark colors here. Is foreground objects can be extremely dark. And that'll help. Because anytime you have a dark object or something a little bit out of focus, you can even use blur like on a camera. It'll help you focus on what's important. The character. Another way to help do that is make the rest of the composition a little bit less loud. So instead of leaving it white, taking it gray, now we're focusing in on this character even more. 
And you can do this a lot of different ways, like just line work. So now we're kind of focusing on this character, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. A good rule of thumb you'll see a lot when it comes to compositions, and this goes for anything. Uh, if you're drawing, if you're coloring, if you're designing a logo, um, wh what amount of colors to use in something. A lot of people will go by, let me do that over, 60, 30, 10. And this is a general rule of thumb. Never, like, fucking figure out these exact numbers. But basically, a lot of people will go by, like, this measurement. Like, 60% of X color, 30% of another, and then your accent is 10. And this also works with grayscale, except it would more or less be 60% uh, gray, 30% black, 10% white. Or some people will do 60% gray, 30% white, 10% black, or the other option where it's mostly white, some black, some gray. I would use that one the least, though. You don't want to leave too much white, unless you're coloring it yourself. So, just having a good balance. So right here, we've kind of got... Here's 30% black. We've kind of got a little bit of gray here. So we would probably, like, use a little bit more gray. And then we can leave the character more or less white. And this will just help contrast and make the character stick out. Even putting, like, a little bit of a darker shade behind him. So... You can even reverse this. Let me get rid of all this. Okay. So you could do the opposite. Say we wanted these panes to be black. Make the frame black as well. Why not? And we want the uh, all of this in here to be... It's a little too red. Gray instead. Kind of the same as last time. The difference is we'll even make the character... Also a little bit gray. We could then leave the guy in the foreground as white and the entire frame, the edges of it, just black. And I know these colors aren't solid. This is just uh, for the sake of a demonstration. So instead, we kind of made the foreground white we made the mid-ground black, and we made the uh, uh, background gray. So you can kind of work these compositions all different ways. This one kind of makes this guy a little bit more of the focus. The first one made him the focus. Um, you never want to make this mid-ground the focus, because it's not important. It's not one of the characters. It's but just it's a rustic Victorian window frame. I put a lot Million. of work, you know, putting all yep. the detail into it. All right, so that's kind of the big thing. The other thing with contrast, let me actually bring that back, is it doesn't apply to uh, just grayscale, of course. It also applies to color. So same thing. So let's say, let's put a big... Sorry, this is a little flashy, guys. A big red overlay on this. Actually, let me change that. We'll make it blue. Put a big blue overlay over this. You got your composition, it's all blue. An easy way to make it stand out is your only warm color is your focus. So automatically, just by him being the only warm color, just makes it that much more interesting. Well, you can not You can do that. You can even push it further. Maybe is it not only the only cool color, or sorry, warm color, it's also the most saturated. I Can I get this any more saturated? Hold on, let me change the brush. There we go. So saturation also works in contrast. If this is your most saturated part and everything else is a little more on the gray side, it'll have the same effect. So there's kind of like three different ways you can go about contrast. Uh, there we go. You can do black and white, 
kind of the most obvious, you know, lights versus darks. You can do uh, warm versus cool colors. You can also do saturated colors versus non-saturated colors. And just to give a quick illustration of uh, that last part. So, carve him out real quick. This weird little tech deck looking guy. So, oh, shush. There. So, you'll see hue, saturation, and lightness. I'm assuming this comes up on stream? Yes, yeah. cool. Oh. So, hue is the actual color. Not too important uh, for this. Saturation is basically how much color, how much pigment is in there. So, no saturation would be more or less grayscale. Uh, you see some of the colors bleeding through from a lower layer. Can I turn that off? Yeah, well, not a big deal. And uh, high saturation is just as bright as the color can be. So you can kind of see it gets a little bit brighter here. So if you look at it now, everything's pumped up saturation. You'll still probably go to the red figure because it's the only warm color in this composition example. But if you desaturate those blues, that guy stands out even a little bit more. And it's kind of the same idea as black and white. A cool little trick to do is uh, this will work on pretty much any software that has a hue saturation layer. Is have a saturation layer at the very top. Take your saturation all the way down. Oh, hold on. I had that selection still, so let me start over so it doesn't grab him. Alright, so hue saturation layer. Take the saturation all the way down. And even on your color pieces, you can just kind of toggle this layer on and off. And it'll help you get a good range of the values. So, like say for instance... Let's do just some random, like, ooh, that's gross. Yellow, red, and we'll do a blue. And you're not really sure how these all interact. You can use a hue saturation layer to kind of see their actual values. And some of them are deceptive. Like, you would think this yellow would be way brighter than the red here. But it's actually pretty close in value. So if you wanted that yellow to stick out more, you would want to go ahead and make it a little bit lighter. And now you can see there's actually quite a difference between those. So hue saturation layers are a great way to get an idea of the values in your uh, composition painting. That works for anything. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I needed to go over. Um, oh, right. Um, pretty much the last thing, without going really in it up, this is kind of like a bullet's point, or a bullet point of all of these different things. Um, the other one is the size of objects in your composition. So, let's kind of go back to yours. Um, so, Jack is clearly the biggest thing. So, you got a large. Kind of got these two medium-sized things here with a coup and the sign. Really, the only thing lacking is small stuff, and I just, again, I'll chalk that up to you're on a time limit, didn't have a lot of time. So, let's see. So, just varying objects in size. So, I've got kind of these small tentacles. Uh, the main character herself here is even kind of small. And then you've got this giant boot in the foreground. So, just varying your sizes. So, like, even, let's say, if I were to go back into this... I could add, there we go, I could add another vine or tentacle in the foreground and just make it extremely large, have it weave in and out of kind of the borders here and play with black and grays a little bit, a little bit too light and kind of give it like a little bit of that like viney overgrowth feel 
if I wanted to. And then this suddenly this composition kind of becomes more about how this guy here has a vine sneaking up behind him. Um, and the reason I'm, I'd use black and gray here is if you leave any of this white, it's going to take away from uh, her. It's just going to help distract. But yeah, a different uh, varying sizes and shapes. Um, like anytime you were going to do a crowd. So let's just say this whole panel's a crowd. We'll have, you know, a guy in the foreground, some people further back. Um, we'll just do like, you know, just kind of group these people together. And maybe, you know, you've got like this person like right up front, like real close. So varying your sizes on whatever you have in your composition will help add a lot. So yeah, what are, what's going on here? Um, it's a party and some guy just crashed it and they're all trying to figure out what's up. There you go. Woo. But yeah, so just any elements you have of varying sizes help. So making sure you have... I don't know, maybe large objects in the foreground, like this face here. Uh, kind of medium ones, and then kind of smaller ones. And it doesn't really matter, because as long as you have the other elements in check... So let's say... Uh, Travis, pick something here. What's the focus? Uh, I'd say the person in the like center there. This one? Yeah. Alright, so we'll make them the focus. We'll kind of... Pretty heavy shadows to this guy. Oh, let me go under a layer. That's why that's not working. Um, so let's let's introduce a little bit of color here. So we'll give them a pretty heavy blue color. We'll also give this person right here kind of a bluish tone. Let's give the background kind of just like this. Another cool color, but keep it kind of green. Something gray for the bottom. And again, we can just use like that kind of warm and cool thing and be like, hey, this person's, um, let's say whoever they are, they're wearing something red. And they kind of stick out. I mean, that's a little much even, but there you go. They're wearing something red and the rest of the crowd back here will bring it back to something blue. Oh, so no, even though you had this whole... Oh, no, go ahead. It's carry. Yeah, basically. Um... So now you've got this whole composition. You've still got your character in the foreground. You've still got this guy here. But undeniably, you look at this, you're going to look at that one big red figure. And you don't always have to be this, like, on the nose with it, too. If you wanted to, you could keep the whole thing analogous, which is uh, a color scheme that's kind of close in colors. And you could make her, like, a very light blue, but keep it pretty saturated. And a good way to bring her out now would just be make sure she contrasts. So maybe you make this part of the background a little bit darker. And it'll help her pop out. And the space is coming forward in the foreground, this one right here. So what we'll do is kind of make the floor a little bit darker so he doesn't stand out as much. There's lots of ways to go about it. Maybe... It's the disco ball itself that's kind of illuminating the character. Like, you could make the disco ball, like, maybe it's refracting light, and the majority of it refracts onto her. And you can kind of make the other, like, light rays a little bit darker. There's all kinds of things. Um... Trying to think of what else. And again, without even thinking about it here, I kind of did the rule of thirds. Third, almost a third. She's kind of at a third. The disco ball's even at one. Um, it would be better here to offset these two. They probably don't need to be right on top of each other unless there's a very specific reason for that. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to do this composition, let's say, let me inverse this. 
delete all this. So, whoops. Let's say I was going to do the composition a little bit closer to this. More of like a comic book format where it's uh, taller rather than wider. You can do the same thing. It's just um, I would take the ball, make it a little higher. Why aren't you letting me grab it? Is it because I have two layers selected? It is. And she shoots. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, kind of the same story. I would just make it a little bit higher. So it's now kind of like a one-third mark as well. And kind of add this foreground person back in. I'll just do it on this layer. So now there's uh, just that person again. Maybe it's just like... Instead now it's just like... Part of a head... Maybe their shoulders. Like, maybe they're just looking the other way. Make that person a little bit bigger. So kind of like we're looking through the, uh, the crowd. Nobody's paying attention to this person. And that's kind of part of the joke. So add small, like, people off in the distance back here. And then you can kind of have, like, this big disco ball effect all around her. Add some rim lighting to the other characters. And she'll still stick out because she is the biggest contrast here. But yeah, I think you guys get the general idea. The compositions can work. You just have to kind of think about how the colors and the contrast are going to interact. You can do it all in with warms and cools. You can do it all with black and white. You can do it all with saturation, but usually the best compositions have a healthy dose of all three, or at least two. Don't always, like, especially if you're doing, like, an analogous color scheme where it's all, like, one or two colors, it's always going to be about the value. So, like, if we turn that value layer from earlier back on, you'll see. You've got, basically, these two large shapes here, and what they're doing is... They're creating, uh, let me make a layer above the hue saturation. There we go. They're creating this kind of V shape that leads right to our quote unquote carry character. And the ball would be shining light right on her. And it kind of creates this just really obvious frame for her. So even just value wise, this still works pretty well. And on top of it, since it's a character's face, there you go. Vane? Did this look like Vane at one point? Did I do something that looked like that? Vane? Oh, I don't know. Do uh, you have any questions or anything you want me to run back over, Travis? Uh, no. Chat, anything? Any questions? Carry the character. I meant... Ah, uh, uh, character. Okay. Yeah, support Vane. Let's go. Thanks, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I've had dumber supports uh, very often and very recently. Um, yeah, Chad, if you have any questions. Oh, sorry, I hit something somewhere and turned on emote only mode. That was a mistake. Um, Travis, do you have any like uh, other questions, composition things you want to see? Any other like scenarios you want to go over? I uploaded that Cerebella picture to the uh, folder. If we could kind of break down and critique the uh, composition of that. Sure. Um, oh, and by the way, a lot of the um, composition things I went over, quite a bit of it can apply to character designs as well, just in general. Yeah, especially but, uh, like the color differentiation and the, the contrast. Yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Just because there's down. a more finished piece, so I figured we could break it down. Yeah. Instead of, you know, going over something that uh, you were rushed on. Alright. Let me see if I have it here. Bop. 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 What's the top of character design? Do you mean this little thing here? It was like a disco ball, but, you know, just for the sake of time, no, we're not going to draw it out. Um, okay. 
So already, uh, let me do one thing and you will see a massive difference. So I'm adding a hue saturation layer. I'm adding it just to the background. So already this will help her pop out, but I think the more prudent thing is, let me find it. A good mid-ground. Uh... There you go. So changing that background from warm to cool and desaturating it a little bit. So now, uh, Sarah, is it, it's Cerebella, right? Yeah, Cerebella is now the most saturated thing, and she's also warm against cool. Mm -hmm. So, again, the warm versus cool isn't the Bible. You don't always have to do it. So, like, you can go right back to some sort of warm color here, and it'd still work as long as it's a little more desaturated, she'll pop out. So maybe you're going purposely for, like, some sort of mood or setting where it's all one color. You can still do that, just the values need to be a little bit different. Um, but in this case, where you had it originally right around here, the background's almost louder than her. Mm. So I would go ahead and drag that saturation over, and I know you can't see my sliders, and make it a little bit cooler. Um, purple's a little loud here. So I think this kind of cyanish color. And you can also adjust the lightness with the same layer. So I might... Um, trying to figure it out. I might pump it. I don't know if I'd actually change that. I think I'd leave lightness where it's at. Yeah, okay. So just making it cool instead with just one layer. It goes from this to this. And it kind of helps her pop out a lot. Because, you know, she's full of oranges and skin tones. Um, I should, let me maybe find another color that helps her hair pop out more. There we go. That's much better. Arankar Espada as in the inspiration for this? Oh, uh, which piece were you talking about? I don't know which one you were talking about on screen. If it was my character, uh, I don't know if there was a particular one, but uh, this is a character from Skullgirls, Travis? Mm-hmm. Alright. So, that's one way to do it. Um, let's see. Just drag this all the way to the top, what the values overall are. So, another thing is... Actually, let me turn this one off so it's back to normal. You can see kind of at a distance, if you were to zoom out on this, you can kind of see her skull, her arms, a little bit of her face. But the problem with that is I say only a little bit of her face. Let me drag this up front. So you got her arms. That's pretty visible. A little bit right here of her leg kind of pops out. That white outline's helping a lot, but I don't think enough. The skull stands out. But otherwise, you kind of lose a lot of the character just because of how similar in tone the background and her both are. Like, if it wasn't for that white line, I think she'd be falling back entirely. And I think it suffers most with her skin. Because um, you kind of lose the character's face from a distance. Um... A hard habit to get into, and I still have trouble doing it, is zooming out your work. Just zoom it out. Look at it from a distance. Can you tell what it is? So let's uh, go back from Jack. and boop. So Jack's a little better because you can kind of see him contrasting against that dark, dark background. But if we flip back to Cerebellum, she gets a little bit lost. So... Let's see, what are some ways to fix it? Uh, this black line is a little heavy, so that's one way. Um, so is that here? We're going to keep this in grayscale. So if you actually just take that and just lower the opacity a bit so it's more of a gray instead of a black. I know those are bleeding through, but who cares? Uh, where's that other diamond pattern? Sorry, I'm flipping through your layers. Oh, right on. Yeah, my layers are a mess. So let's shift this, make it a little bit 
lighter. You could even go the opposite route and make it much, much darker. Mm -hmm. And now she's popping out a lot more, especially since the white on those sleeves. So... What does this look like without the hue saturation layer on? Ooh, yeah, it's pretty loud. Okay. So let's go back on all that. Turn this one back on. So this is a good case of where the color kind of solves the issue a lot more. Because value-wise, it's still pretty close. But that worm versus, uh, versus cool really helps you save... Uh... There, sorry, I had to figure out what layer I turned on. There it is. That warm versus cool will really help save you here. Um, another thing that could help is a little bit more of a kind of harsher like color difference on the character. So say you wanted to... Uh, you got a pretty general light source here. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Honestly, I'm not sure. I think, honestly, as long as you just make the background cool in this case, it's fine. But other options would include stuff like uh, embellishing a lot of the color layers a lot more. Sorry, I'm just messing with my layers right now. And just kind of helping some of this to pop out. Gonna add one more layer. Where is it? There we go. Sorry, having some trouble finding the layers. So, and some heavier shadows will really help. Let's add a little more color to that because this is kind of a big, colorful piece. So, just kind of pushing your values here will definitely help a lot. Erase some of that overlap. Um. Like, especially this cast shadow here, that'll help a lot. Maybe accentuate some of the folds on the fabric. You can also add in some highlights. That's a little much. Do like some lighting on the side, like she's maybe got some light hitting her uh, from back here from another source. Because again, it's art, you can do whatever you want, who cares? No one can tell you otherwise. I don't like it on the black socks. We're not going to do that there. Uh, these white sleeves, just adding a little bit. Hold on, the layer. Uh, just a little bit darker on that. See, a lot of it is just um, pushing the contrast here. Mm -hmm. Let's get a darker color for that underside of her neck. Let me just zoom in instead of trying to finesse it from a mile away like a weirdo. Oh, no, I do that all the time. Yeah. It's better for an example, so that's why I'm wondering. This is also messy. But yeah, so let's see. That was the wrong layer. So yeah, so right now this is how you had it. Mm -hmm. And just adding a little bit more contrast kind of it helps pop her out a bit more more so the shadows than the bell and whistles of highlights but you can see there like that rim lighting on her dress is pretty strong probably too strong actually but um those shadows kind of really help pop her out and that really helps with the definition mm -hmm. so that's more on the minor side i think honestly the biggest was your background being pretty much the same color palette which can work but in this case, it was just, in general, a little too loud. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any other questions regarding this one? Uh, no. All right. Anything else in general you want me to take a look at? or? Uh, I've got nothing. All right. Chat, you got any questions or requests? Well, if you've got requests tonight uh throw them in chat if you think of them later the suggestion box is always open here on the channel looking through 
or some of my other shit. Just close my files while I wait to see what chat says. Alright, I'm not, uh, not really seeing anything. Uh, did this help at all, Travis? I ask this every oh, time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, I didn't go too deep into a lot of it. Um, because a lot of this is, when it comes to composition, has to be a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm just going to be repeating the same shit over it's and over. Very general guidelines, but it's... Yeah. absolutely helpful. I feel like the biggest thing, um that wouldn't have been dead obvious on this one is uh, the value contrast thinking about colors as well. Yeah. A lot of the other stuff comes from practice, like the general shadow shapes. Like, I don't know, let's just say, for instance, over here for a quick little ender. A scene like, I don't know, uh, let's say we've got some mountains up here. Or like a cliffside. Got uh, the sun in the background. Probably some winding road coming up this way. Like it's just a path. So we put some grass and stuff. So maybe a tree in the background. And, um, I don't know. Let's say we've got. Some people on, like, I don't know, a horse or something. Maybe it's just, like, two people coming around the corner of the horse. The biggest thing with compositions like this is... Well, now that sun looks like his head, so I'm going to erase that. See, this is just how figuring out compositions work. So instead, we'll have the horizon line back here kind of tilted and have the sun poking up over it. So the biggest thing with compositions like this is, cool, you planned all this out, it could work. If you end your planning here, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go wrong or right. The big thing here is to keep planning and figure out your values, maybe even your colors. So from here, let's just go like, all right, so usually it's easier to make the foreground really dark um, let's add some shadows on the tree over here to help balance it out. We got the sun over here. It's obviously going to be pretty, pretty bright. Um, so we'll make the cowboys grayish. And I, yes, I did cowboys for you, Travis. I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, so a lot Not of it is... idiot, he's doing it himself. So a lot of it is just figuring out your values as you go. And it'll really help you plan out your composition. So like right now, this one's not not too great. It needs something more for the composition. Also, let me move this layer down. Never mind, that looks worse. So a better option might be instead make these front ground uh, like rock face a little lighter and instead Make the cowboys heavy in blacks, since the sun's hitting them from the other way. Had a little hat. And this should help a lot. Um, and, like, I don't know, just little stuff. Like, add some line work in the background. Do that swishy effect. So, I've kind of got everything going this way right now. Like, let me add a different color. Everything kind of... Sorry, I thought I turned that to red and it didn't want to. Everything's kind of going this direction. Since I rolling hills, the path, here, it's all pointing back towards these cowboys. So I kind of want a diagonal this way to help balance it out. Unless the other option is you leave it that way because it's a comic book and you want to point them towards the next panel. Hmm. This also does help with the sense of travel. Because it's like, oh, they're going somewhere. They're going whatever the hell's over here. So what we can do instead is give that tree a little bit more of a cast shadow. 
What can we add to the background? Just some simple line effects. Just add some like simple wind or like little striations in the sky to denote wind or clouds and have it going the opposite direction. So let's do, it's like, I don't know. We want to do some simple clouds and we'll just have them all like all the line work flowing the opposite direction. That kind of fills up that dead space into the sky too. Just little stuff like that. And you can have rocks in the foreground, blades of grass, and just helping planning it out in values kind of makes it feel a lot more alive. So, and another way to handle this would be, say, forget the sun. Uh, the sun's exploded. Everyone's died. If you take out the sun of this composition, it actually makes it far easier. And I'm working through this in real time, so this is just a good way to practice compositions. Instead, now you take the whole background, gradient this way, and kind of have them backlit by the sun. It explains why they're in shadow, and um, you can kind of make everything far away from them a little bit darker. Maybe since the sun's at their backs now, you light them up with some rim lighting, and that contrast of the white light hitting them from behind is really going to help separate them. But yeah, you can just work out any composition you want this way. Just play around with it. Um, think about your compositions and values in the rough stage. It'll really help out anything you're going to make. But like, even this, you could turn this into anything. Like... So, let me find out what layer this is on here. So, let's... Sorry, I know I'm going on a tangent, but I keep thinking of examples on the fly. And I'll let you go after this one, okay, Travis? Oh, right on. So, even this one, you could just change it up a bit. Like, it was the fucking Carrie movie or whatever. But if you want, you can even just do a few simple tweaks... And now suddenly, zombies. yep, now suddenly it's a horror flick of some sort, not that Carrie wasn't, and this is like the character who's mind controlled them all. So these compositions can work in many, many different ways. And instead of maybe having them as blue, you just make them a little more desaturated of a red. Because um, a generally a good rule of thumb is you want a character and their followers to kind of feel like they belong together in a sense. Hmm. Unless, of course, there's a story reason for otherwise. But here, we'll go ahead and... There you go. And you would probably put, like... If this is a comic book, really big, super cool title up here. And that's why a lot of compositions for other media, you'll see this area up here blank. This is the perfect area for text of any sort. Big title... Uh, blah, 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 big, big Marvel movie. Who cares? But yeah, a lot of blank space or dead space in a composition can be used for that. And sometimes you need to do that. Like, even down here, this could be used for text, because there's not really anything important there on the characters. Alright, that's it. I'm done going on tangents. Now I want to see you make a full comic out of just that. Uh, is that what you want to make next week's episode about? Making a full comic out of just that, uh, essentially cover piece that you just drew? I don't know, I was joking, but we can go over a comic composition at some point. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll Thanks figure so out questions. what we're gonna do, yeah, we'll figure out what we're gonna do in post next time. Um, if you have suggestions for, like, what kind of art stuff you're having trouble with, um, even if you want to send things in for critiques, we can do that as well. Right on. Um, like you bringing up the Sarah Bella piece today for a critique? Perfect. Uh, we'll even critique something of Aaron's sometime, just to make him panic. There we go. All right. We'll critique um, his, uh, his wonderful Photoshop from many streams ago. I'm not sure I remember it. Uh, it was the... 
Norton antivirus. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Um. Do you know what? Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, never mind. I'm asking something I already asked. Uh, so I'm assuming this was helpful, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, this one's a little more harder to pinpoint than the last uh, two because it's just kind of like a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one we'll probably have to revisit with a couple other pieces you've done. Gotcha. Can't hurt okay. to really uh, drill at home. Yep. I mean, God knows it happened to me for a few years. I'm sure it'd still happen to me for another few years if I went back to uh, Qbert. Alright, I think that's it for us here. Um, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you.